In this tutorial, we're going to look at crude oil. The first aim is describe what crude oil is, then explain the process of fractional distillation, a way of processing crude oil, and then describe the uses of different crude oil fractions. So what useful stuff can we make with crude oil? I thought I'd start off with a thought-provoking idea. If you think about all the plastics we use, where do plastics come from? Well, one way you could think about it is they come from the fossilised remains of ancient fish. So all these plastic bottles here caught in this net are actually made from fish. How is that possible? Well, the missing link is crude oil. Really, crude oil is made from fish and then the crude oil is processed to make the plastics. Now, crude oil is an incredibly valuable fossil fuel. Those who control the flow of crude oil on our planet have immense power and wealth. It's also not surprising that crude oil is the subject of many wars, people could argue. But how exactly is it made? So it starts off with fish dying and falling to the bottom of the seabed. Over time, sediment falls and traps the fish in a way that no bacteria can get to them to decompose or break them down. Over very long periods of time and under high pressure, the fish chemically change and turn into one of the most valuable substances on this planet, sometimes known as black gold, but to you and me known as crude oil. But what is crude oil exactly? Crude oil is a mixture of a certain type of molecule called hydrocarbon. So crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbon molecules. If we zoom in, here you can see lots of different hydrocarbon molecules. Each one is identical in terms of the atoms that make it up, a carbon backbone surrounded by hydrogen atoms. But you will notice that the lengths of the hydrocarbon molecules varies, a bit like different lengths of spaghetti, all twisted and coiled in with each other. So crude oil is basically a mess of hydrocarbon molecules of different lengths. Now in this state, it's pretty much useless, but if we can find a way to separate out these molecules according to their length, then suddenly it becomes very useful indeed. So let's do that. Let's separate these molecules out according to their length. Let's put the smaller ones at the left end of this scale, the medium ones in the middle of the scale, and the long ones at the end of this scale. What we've done now is group these hydrocarbon molecules according to their length and therefore the properties they share, the physical properties they share. So the smallest molecules are likely to be the most flammable, very easy to ignite. They will have the lowest boiling point, so they'll most likely be a gas at room temperature. They'll be the least viscous. Viscous, if you think, is a way of describing thickness. So treacle, for example, would be very viscous, whereas water would be not so viscous, very runny. As we move towards longer chain molecules, now they become slightly less flammable, so you need to put a bit more effort into setting them alight. Not too much more, mind. Um, they will have a higher boiling point, so they might be a liquid now at room temperature, and they'll be slightly more viscous. Then if we keep on going higher, so the molecules are now longer still, they will be at their least flammable. They will have their highest boiling point, so they're more likely to be solid at room temperature, and they'll be most viscous. Think of it like road tar, that treacly, black, thick, syrupy stuff we pour on roads before they harden. So the main point here is the size of the hydrocarbon molecule will affect the properties of that molecule. And if we can separate crude oil out into its different chain lengths, then we can suddenly make it very useful. For example, we can make fuels, we can make road tar. In an exam, one of the easiest questions they could ever ask you is describe what is meant by a hydrocarbon. Or you would say a molecule made from hydrogen and carbon atoms. So hydrocarbon molecules always have this carbon backbone with hydrogen stemming off it. In these diagrams, the letters represent atoms and the white lines represent the bonds shared between the atoms. So out of these two molecules, which one is the hydrocarbon? Well, the first one is made from carbon and hydrogen atoms. So is the second one, but it also has chlorine atoms. So this is not a hydrocarbon molecule, as you can see the chlorine there. This is more likely to be the polymer or the plastic PVC or polyvinyl chloride. I only mention this now because actually you need to identify this type of molecule in an exam. They may not show you the end pieces. They might just show you a section of it. In reality, a PVC molecule will be much, much longer than this. 
So now you know that crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbon molecules and hydrocarbon molecules are basically molecules made from hydrogen and carbon atoms. You can describe what crude oil is. So we've seen how crude oil is a mixture of different hydrocarbons with different chain length molecules. And we've seen how different chain lengths have different properties. So if we can sort out crude oil, the mess of hydrocarbons, into its different sized molecules, then we can suddenly make it useful. But how can we do this? We certainly can't use our hands to sort them out. We need to use another process called fractional distillation. This is when we separate molecules according to their boiling point. Basically, the larger the molecule, the higher the boiling point. So how does this work? For fractional distillation to work, we need a device called a fractionating column. These are huge towers which are heated in a way to create a temperature gradient. In other words, it's hotter at the bottom and cooler at the top. This is what makes it possible to separate things according to their boiling point. So remember, boiling point is the temperature at which molecules become gases from liquids, so liquid to gas. So in this example, we're going to be looking at three types of molecule. We're going to look at small ones, medium-sized ones, and large ones. I've given the small molecules a boiling point of 108 degrees Celsius. So if you go above that, they'll turn into a gas. Below that, they'll condense and become a liquid. That's why boiling points can also be called condensation points. The medium-sized molecules will turn into a gas above 174 degrees Celsius and below 174 degrees Celsius to turn into a liquid. And the largest molecules have the highest boiling point of 335 degrees Celsius, above which they become a gas, below which they become a liquid. So in step one, the crude oil is heated in a furnace. Step two, once it's heated, the crude oil becomes a gas and enters the column as a gas. Now remember that these don't represent single molecules, but rather this one, for example, represents all the molecules in crude oil of this size. So let's focus on the largest molecules first, which have a boiling point of 335 degrees Celsius. So at this point, it's above 340, so it's way too hot for these um, molecules to condense, to come together, and basically form a liquid. But when it rises and it becomes about 335 here, then, then there isn't enough energy to keep these molecules as a gas, so they drain off as a liquid here. Now let's look at the second medium-sized molecules with a boiling point of 174 degrees Celsius. Now these are smaller, so basically they'll remain a gas for longer, because it's too hot for them to condense here, too hot here, too hot here, and then they get to around 174 here. Now there's not enough energy to keep these medium-sized molecules as a gas, so they will condense and form a liquid here. Finally, the smallest molecules, well they have a boiling point in this example of 108 degrees Celsius, so they will remain as a gas for longest. They'll keep rising and rising and rising. And when it gets to around 108 here, there won't be enough energy to keep these as a gas. So they'll condense and become a liquid and we'll drain them off here. These are called fractions, the various products that are made from this process. Now that is quite a mouthful. So how do we say this in a nice, easy way? Well, as I said, you start off crude oil is heated. It enters the column as a gas. And then basically you just give an outline of what happens. So larger molecules condense at the bottom where it's hottest, whereas smaller molecules condense higher up where it's cooler. So stick to these four sentences and you'll be fine. So that is how you explain the process of fractional distillation. Just remember those four sentences. So this is actually not in any way the hardest part of this topic. In some ways it's the easiest, but it does require memory alone. There's nothing to work out here. You just have to remember this. So we're going to look at the different useful products we make from fractional distillation of crude oil. So we're going to look at the different fractions. These are the things that get tapped off here. Now this could be as basic as a sort of match up the lines exercise. So you match up the fraction with its use. I've seen that before in exams, but it could also be a six marker where you describe the uses of the different fractions of crude oil. All you need is a good memory and a bit of patience. So we have gases, which basically come off the top and they can be used in cooking and heating. You have petrol, I'm sure you'll remember that because we use it as car fuel. If we go down, and remember the chain length is getting longer as we go down. Next we have naphtha, which is lighter fluid. It can be used for other things as well, but the main use which you would know is lighter fluid. Kerosene is aircraft fuel. 
Diesel is used for fuel for trains and lorries. Fuel oil for ships and power station fuel. Some power stations, not all. And bitumen, which we use as road tar and roof surfacing. I mean, you can just pause and write these down if you want. It's just a matter of memory. But that's it. So now you can describe the uses of different crude oil fractions. Done.